thank you to the people who are supporting me on Kofi. You guys are keeping me alive. The morning summer sun was shining almost harshly onto the lovely neighborhood of home. But after three days of seemingly endless rain, it was a great change of pace. Outside, the puddles quickly evaporated, and the terrible weather was almost forgotten by everyone. On this glorious morning, Wally Darling decided to go out for a walk. He wore a Sunday walking suit and even carried with him his old walking cane. After all, the painter liked to keep things classy. With a pep in his step and humming a happy tune, he wandered through the neighborhood. Though despite his jolly mood, and it not being that hot, when walking through the sunlight street, it could get quite hot after all. Thankfully, on his way was Howdy Pillar's store, run by the jolly Howdy Pillar. Howdy Pillar was an anthropomorphic caterpillar. His skin was a pleasant lime green, with gentle blue hair, four legs that made the man quick on a step, and four arms allowing for fast restocking of items. Always up for a nice chat, he often gave discounts on his wares in exchange for a good joke that he hasn't heard yet. So yes, the caterpillar was always quite a welcome sight. With a smile, Wally walked into the store. The entrance bell rung and almost immediately Howdy appeared at the counter. Morning, neighbor said the store owner with a big smile. Hey there, old chap, retorted Wally, smiling from ear to ear. What can I do for you today? Wally swiped his brow. Uh, well, truth be told, Howdy, it's been a little hot out there. In the sun, I just need to cool down a little. The caterpillar sighed softly as he grinned at the painter. You gotta drop those suits, pal. Wear something more light. Actually, while we're on that topic, I have recently gotten these fancy new shirts. However, Wally just shook his head. Not today, pal. Suit yourself. Wally blinked. Excuse me, was that a pun? At the realization, Howdy blinked himself. Oh, sorry, buddy. That one was not intended. Wally now walked through the neatly packed aisles, while Howdy just sat back down in his chair, leaning back as far as he could for comfort. Hey, uh, Howdy, shouted Wally over the fruit aisle. Yes? Have you heard about that joke with the skeleton? Howdy grinned, knowing that a true knee slapper was about to be unleashed. No, I think I did not. <laughs> Me neither, but apparently it's spine-tinglingly humorous. Howdy burst out into loud laughter. <laughs> that one was terrible. Yep, but... Wally leaned over the fruit aisle to look at Howdy, making finger guns at the caterpillar. I still made you laugh. The caterpillar sighed. <sighs> Just take one apple already. Thanks. But just as Wally took hold of a juicy green apple from a neatly stacked pyramid, it happened. The entire structure, going as if in slow motion, fell apart like an avalanche. Oh no 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 no! Come on! Growled Wally as he tried to grab as many apples as possible. Howdy, hearing the commotion, immediately jumped up from his seat. Wally! He shouted concerned, but as he rounded the corner, looking down into the aisle where Wally was almost desperately grabbing every apple he could to put back, 
He felt like someone had slapped him in the face. I'm sorry, old chap, muttered Wally loud enough for him to hear. Just drop the apples, buddy. I got this. Over the next couple of minutes, the two men put the apples into a crate that Howdy had brought. What now? The caterpillar scratched the back of his head. Well, I would just... He paused. Now that he thought about it, this was a chance he could grab with all of his hands. And Howdy cleared his throat. <clears> throat> Um, well, uh, those are Emerald Queens. They're being grown at an orchard just out of town. Since this batch is ruined, I gotta get new ones from the farm. Wally looked at Howdy perplexed. Seriously? What's wrong with the apples from home? Uh, nothing. Howdy was confused. But Holmes' apples are, well, red, mostly, and... Well, look at yourself. You went for the green one yourself just now. The painter looked at the apple in his hand. Green ones are nice and sour and a little firm to the bite. They're more for when you need to cool off. They're a refreshment. While Holmes' sweet red ladies are more warm and comforting. Uh, anyways, I gotta get new ones. I'll be gone for a while. Uh, do you mind watching the store? Maybe then I forgot the damage you just did. Pure thing, Hardy. I'm sorry. Well, thank home today wasn't a busy day at the store. And Wally soon understood why. As the hours passed, the neighborhood quickly heated up. So much, he could see the heat mesmerizingly rise up from the street itself. Howdy's store, due to the frozen goods aisle, however, was kept cool and fresh. He had started his accidental shift at the store by taking inventory. Of course, the caterpillar had everything neatly stored, and there wasn't really anything he could replace. Outside of those apples. Seriously, how unfortunate could a man be? He lamented. Wally could reorganize some stuff. Though that sounded a bit counterintuitive. Better not upset Howdy with random things he did to his store. Though... He wondered what Howdy could be doing right now. While he wasn't sure what could possibly be outside home at this point. It scared him a little that this town had become his reality. Due to it being just a perfect slice of heaven. With a nostalgic feeling, Wally went behind the counter, putting a hand under his chin and resting his arm on it. Wally smiled and closed his eyes, the painter falling asleep soon thereafter. You raised your head from the trash can you had been sleeping in, the lid creating a sort of sun hat. Your eyes narrowed as you looked up at the sun, to which you had lost many staring contests till, and it was the reason you now had to wear special glasses. My old enemy, you growled, raising a fist. I will not be defeated by you! You hated heat. Heat was something you couldn't do anything against except get naked. Cold was nicer. Just put on more clothes and done. Quickly you climbed out of a can, your naked feet touching the overheated ground. How dare you harm my tiny feet! You shouted at the sun, but there was no way around it. You quickly rushed into a nearby alley that had been drowned in shadows all morning and was still a bit moist and cool from the rain. There, you sighed, pressing your back against a wall. Your heart raised. It seemed as if this battle was lost once again. You'd get the sun next time. Quickly you knelt down, using a finger to draw in the alley's grime. Both a eulogy if the sun were to game end you, and a small, terribly drawn map of home, just so you could figure out what to do next. Yes, yes, good job, Brain. We are going to Howdy! 
The store was the closest cool place after all. You broke out into a mad sprint, catching every small shadow possible. Angrily raising your fist whenever your feet felt like they were about to melt. Evil, evil son. Until you finally, desperately made it into the grocery store. Your feet touched the cold tile pattern floor. You and your ears heard the pleasant hum of the air conditioner. Sighing, you leaned against the wooden door frame. A tactical retreat is not a loss. It's not a lo I have not lost. Okay? Stop laughing. Sun always was so mean to you. After you were done shouting at the sky, you went fully inside. Your fingers touching as many of the food friends as possible to find the one who wanted to be eaten. And there it was. On all fours you crawled forward. A box, a big old box filled to the brim with shiny green apples. All looking at you expectantly, smiling. Your mouth watered like a predator on the prowl. Grabbing one, you raised it up like you were presenting the new prince of the pride to the animals. Before guiding it to your mouth, biting a huge crunchy chunk off of it. It was so juicy, cool, hard and sour. You started humming. You loved it. It was so refreshing. Quickly you jumped up on your feet, throwing the bitten apple on Howdy's counter, only to notice Wally Darling snoozing off. Curiously you climbed on the counter, crawling towards Wally, looking closely at his face. And as your nose touched, his eyes suddenly shot open. Honestly, how should he react to your presence? What was appropriate in this situation? Obviously the urge to scream. After all, who liked to be woken up by the sight of a girl wearing a black trash bag as a dress and a trash can lit as a hat? Not to mention, your noses were still touching. Hey, Tamra, he muttered. Tamra trash can. That was you. That's who you were. A recent addition to the neighborhood. And no, you actually, despite the appearance, weren't homeless. You suffered from a special type of delusion, where you weren't aware of your sleepwalking. Sleepwalking being the reason you often woke up outside in a trash can. Not to mention, the reason why you believed everything was alive. After all, what else could be the reason all your stuff moved at night in your home? It just had to be alive. You believing that your completely ordinary home was alive and trying to annoy you for fun was relatable to Wally, whose home was actually alive. And the only home that was actually alive. At least to his knowledge. That's why he wasn't scared of you like most other neighbors. A sort of bond was between the two of you that stayed unspoken and why he had made it his daily side quest to seek you out and bring you back to reality by reminding you that, in fact, not everything was alive. It always worked, until you fell asleep again and woke up. Almost as if a reset button was hit. Greetings, painter, he said. How are your brushes doing? Remember, they need to be cleaned often. They like to get dirty, the filthy little things. Right, he said almost sarcastically. Have you asked your canvases for consent yet? Consent is important. I wouldn't want to be painted on unless I wanted to. Do you, do you want to be painting on me? You can. I'll let you. The fact that indeed you were still right up in his face didn't matter. This was just a normal conversation between the two of you. I do ask my canvases, yes. He humored you. Good. If they complain to me, I will complain twice as hard to you. 
Wally suppressed a smile. The feeling that he felt for you was a heightened sense of fondness, his heart always skipping a beat whenever he laid eyes upon you. It was almost painful to him to pull you out of your delusions every day. We finally leaned back and grabbed the apple. This one. You looked over to the box. And these, they all want to be eaten, and I want to eat them. Wally finally sighed. Uh, you do realize they're just apples. And just like that, the button was flicked. You blinked, looking down at the fruit. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You put the apple down and climbed off the counter. Sorry for biting into it. But I got money. Don't worry. But as you attempted to pull out your wallet from a pouch you hid beneath your trash bag dress, Wally raised a hand before pointing at a sign. Huh? Confused, you read it. It was a reminder for the policy that items below $2 were free if you managed to make Howdy laugh. You turned your attention back to the painter. But I didn't make you laugh. He blushed a little. Your skin was a dark green with a turquoise nose and wild blue hair and sapphire blue tongue. Hmm. Almost like a photonegative version of Julie, or sibling of Julie, that had gotten lost in a trash heap decades ago. Wild hair so long it reached your ankles and often created a sort of long veil that hit your voluptuous body. Fondly, he smiled at you as your eyes narrowed. And then you tipped your fingers together, simply asking, Are you flirting with me? Uh, maybe? Yes. Yes, I'm trying to flirt with you. Sorry. You started rocking your head up and down as you were thinking. Oh, um, okay, so, uh, might as well. Without warning, you leaped at him, your body crashing into the painter, throwing both you and him to the ground. He coughed and groaned, but he didn't break anything, thankfully. You were on top of him, his tie already wrapped around your wrist like a leash, as you were straddling him. Your face twisted into an almost evil smirk. Wally blushed. The pain in his back was instantly forgotten when your eyes met. Uh, we shouldn't do it right! With a quick pull of your wrist, you crashed his face into yours by his tie. Your lips smacking together as you hungrily devoured his mouth. He groaned and moaned into your demanding touches. You were quite a skilled kisser, your tongue still tasting like the fresh sour apple. And after a few minutes of loud, wet kissing, you allowed him to take a breath. He had gone limp, just hanging by his tie that was still held by you like a dog leash. We shouldn't do this, at least not here. When should we do it then? You asked seductively. He raised his right arm, weakly pointing at the back room door. There, maybe? Mm, good thinking. After all, we don't want to spoil the food, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Love you, Wally. You said before standing up, dragging Wally behind yourself as you pulled him into the back room with you. You watched your paint dry as it glistened on the canvas, a warm wind blowing from your right, your eyes going up and down the half-finished painting, as you try to find any blemishes or smirches. 
Taking a step to the side, you looked at the field before you. The grass was green, sprinkled with pink and yellow flowers. The noise of insects buzzed inside your ears, seemingly getting louder or more quiet, depending on what you were occupying yourself with. A faint claw caught your attention. Its borderline translucent whiteness making your mind wander, imagining the free sky, the fluffy cloud body. You didn't even realize your mouth was half agape the entire time, as you stared absent-mindedly. You were a painter by trade, or more had been some time ago. A few years ago your art studio had burned down, destroying all the pieces that were still left unfinished, plus a few that had already been sold yet were awaiting pickup. You haven't really drawn since. Taking on the moniker of Susie's soot. A soot was all that remained of your inspiration, of your work, of your creativity, and of your motivation. The fire truly had changed you. Before you were known for your abstract art, it was far more complex than a mere red canvas with a singular blue line through it. But since then, whenever you tried to paint, it turned into grotesque pieces depicting violence and loss. Your own art frightening you. And before you left the big city, you were leaving behind a small apartment filled to the brim with these. You had found yourself in the neighborhood of home soon thereafter, your father having won a house there during a raffle, which he promptly gifted to you. Thinking a change in scenery would do you good. You were a beautiful yellow puppet with a black nose. The right half of your hair was a mix of fiery red and orange, while the other left half was black like coal. The inside of your mouth, including your tongue, was black too. And you usually wore a black made dress, a hand-me-down from your sister, Melody Ringabell, headmate of the Bucks or Plenty family household. After many weeks of self-isolation, you had finally left your tiny home. You had lost a lot of weight, not really wanting to bother going to buy food, but your stomach was killing you and there was no way around it anymore. Behind you was a basket filled with goodies for a picnic, though it definitely was too much for you to eat alone. Howdy! A voice suddenly called out to you. You turned around staring back at them. It was a yellow puppet dressed in blue. He himself was holding a canvas on his right arm. It was Wally Darling, one of the people living in the quiet town. Of course, like with pretty much everyone else in home you barely interacted with. So he didn't respond. But he still approached you, making you take a defensive step back. And without asking, he just plopped up his canvas next to yours, while you continued staring at him. He was preparing his paints. After a moment of silence, he looked at you and smiled. I like coming out here. It's super great for inspiration. Sometimes I draw the sky or the forest. He pointed past the picture towards the horizon. And if you look more closely, you can even make out a wonderful mountain range. By focusing on different combinations of things on the planes, you can make so many different paintings. You now returned your attention to your own, hoping it would shut him up. Well, it actually worked for a bit. You were about to fall back into the same trance that made you draw these horrible, horrible pictures when Wally interrupted you again. Oh, gosh darn, I'm all out of green. Do you have some? I specifically would like some pine tree green. 
if you have that, of course. Well, it just so happened that you had a tube of pine tree and gree. Reluctantly, you waved him over before squeezing a big glob of the paint onto his palate. <sighs> You're a lifesaver, Susie. You furrowed your brows. Lifesaver was a little bit of an over-exaggeration, wasn't it? You thought. Quietly, the two of you continued. Brush stroke after brush stroke. The pleasant stench of paint was beginning to become comforting again. But it was just then when your stomach loudly rumbled. It had been loud enough for Wally to hear. Oh dear, do you want an apple? You didn't respond. I got a spare one. You turned to your right. Behind you, where you had your picnic basket. You sprayed out a poker dot blanket because placing your food on it. Sandwiches, garlic butter, barguettes, and a full cake with cherry frosting. Its delicious sweet scent even overpowered the smell of paint and flowers. While he watched you place down the treats, his mouth watering delightfully. The puppet was practically eating the cake with his eyes already. You only took a glance at him before taking out a second plate for him, putting it opposite to you. Wally understood. <laughs> Thanks, Susie, he said happily. With a thud, he landed on the ground before you. Patiently, he waited for you to divide the food. Wally finished his bite before continuing to talk. You know, it was complete coincidence that I found this place. As I already said, it's perfect for landscape paintings. Hmm. I think it was a year ago. Barnaby was suddenly gone, and no one knew where he was. <laughs> you never guessed where the big old loaf was hiding. It was in Howdy Pillar's pantry. But that isn't important to the story. He chuckled. Wally always got nervous around you, so he just kept talking and talking and seemingly making things worse. At first, the painter thought you'd be a rival to him after realizing you were a painter too. After all, you had this certain aura, like all artists. Just one look and, well, he could tell what your occupation was. So, uh, while looking for Barnaby, I fell down this hill. Slipped. I know, silly me. Wally pointed over yonder, where just barely you could make out a steep incline that led up to Holmes' main road. Over there, actually. Wally stretched out his arms excitedly. And then I found this. After we found the old beagle, I just had to come back here. And paint. I was so inspired. Despite your lack of any kind of response, even facially, you clung to every word he said. Now you're probably wondering why Barnaby was in the pantry. You blinked and Wally sighed. Yeah, I guess you already see that that would be a super long story. And by then you probably know Barnaby and the neighborhood better than they know themselves <laughs> it, 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 it really is a long story awkwardly Wally looked at you come on throw me a bone he said hopelessly just say something you blinked and after a second Wally snapped his fingers excitedly <sighs> I know Wally set his food down and ran past you into the thicket. Minutes passed, as you stared at the spot where he vanished into the trees, only to return moments later with a heavy rock in his hands rushing towards you and... No way, Wally would not do that. You rubbed your eyes. Your mind was playing tricks on you again. Ever since the fire, that seemed to be the norm. 
though the painter did soon return, in his hands a dirty box. As he returned to your side, he set it down. This is a time capsule, he said. About two weeks before you joined our neighborhood, we buried it here. He set the box down. You know, I thought to myself, Wally, hey, you only missed it by a few days, and I think it would be unfair if you're the only one left out of the fun when we reopen it in a few years. Wally opened the password lock. Do you want to play something in it? It would mean a lot to me. There were a couple of knickknacks in the box already. A paintbrush, an empty envelope with a rainbow-colored post-it, a star-shaped glass ornament, a wooden apple, a paintbrush, a pink hair tie, a tiny black folded fedora, a rainbow-colored bird feather, and a paper mache heart. And other loose items were inside of it. Honestly, you didn't have anything to add, plus wasn't what he was doing right now a violation of the unwritten rules of time capsules? You were a little offended, but also glad you could be part of this. The hint of a smile began to decorate your face as you stood up, grabbing the tube of pine green color from your canvas. Wally grinned from ear to ear. Okay, that's hilarious. He commented, as you placed the tube next to the paintbrush. Wally quickly locked the box again. I... I really, really appreciate you doing this, Susie. Thank you. Excited, Wally ran off again to bury the box, while you finished your meal. When the painter sat back down again, he was now sitting right next to you. A bead of sweat covering his forehead. His amazing pompadour looked heavy from the exhaustion. Glancing at Wally, he was completely ecstatic. It's always fun when a new neighbor comes to home. Boldly, the painter set his head on your shoulder. I'm glad you're here. You blushed heavily in response. Wait, did he mean that actually? You looked at him, and your eyes met. He smiled lightly. <laughs> uh, are you feeling what I'm feeling? He asked, and you blinked. Because my heart is uh, beating faster and faster, or is, uh, or is that your heart? <laughs> Morley was right, your heart was pounding quite fast right now. You were practically excited. So was he. Your faces came closer, but before your lips could touch, he asked, Are you okay with this? Rolling your eyes, you took hold of his face, pulling him closer to yours. He hummed almost immediately when your lips met. Wally was warm and pleasant to the touch, and his tongue boldly began exploring your mouth. It tasted like the cherry cake. So it was pleasant. Your body now disobeying you. You took hold of his shoulders, pulling him on top of you as you lie down on your back. Instinctively his hands took hold of the buttons on your dress, but he stopped himself right before unbuttoning the second one. He raised his head. Catching his breath. Are you... Are you really okay with this? He asked one last time. And you opened your mouth. Smiling. Before saying... Yes. I am. One of the many places in the neighborhood of home was the ice cream parlor. Clear and tasty. 
run by you. The energetic Clara Clearly. Every morning you woke up at exactly 7 a.m. just after sunrise, brushed your teeth, put on your work uniform and went to the parlor. You spent most of your days alone there, sitting, maybe occasionally having someone faceless as your customer. Of course not in the literal sense, it's just when so many different and unassuming people walked into your establishment without any real input or care to give, well, that was just a given to happen over time. But when it happened, it terrified you a little. It was as if this place had become your entire personality. You sighed. You felt like turning into a puddle. Even the puddle's jukebox had stopped working a few weeks ago. So no repetitive 70s swing music to keep you company, even. You were lying face first on your counter, dozing off. Small stream of spittle coming out of your mouth. Inside the ice cream shop it was comfortably cold. Just how you liked it. That was a given, of course. Have ever heard of an ice cream salesperson who enjoyed the heat of the outside? After all, it had been a terribly hot summer. You had moved into the neighborhood a while ago. Didn't seem too big. And bustling. Hence why so few businesses were here in the first place. But that just made it all the more attractive to you. After all, every town deserved at least one ice cream shop, no matter how small it was. The door opened and another faceless customer appeared. Good morning, neighbor. Wonderful day we're having. What can I get you? You sat followed by a fake smile and a wink. They greeted you with the surprisingly deep voice. And after a quick look around, Yes, I'd like two scoops of strawberry, one of vanilla, a huge heap of cream with cookie crumbles, and strawberry drizzle on top, in a bowl. Almost robotically, you took down the customer's orders as he walked deeper into your parlor. Hmm, seemed as if this one wasn't a to-go order for once. Maybe this customer was able to be socialized with. You began serving up his order as you eyed him, getting ready to put a quarter in the broken jukebox, clearly ignoring the out-of-order sign. Uh, the box is... You watched him put the quarter in. Bro, after selecting a song, he hit the jukebox hard on the top, which made it produce a loud clanking noise, followed by it actually playing the song. Ken. You fixed it! You shouted while your customer just snapped his fingers and rhythm off the music. And now that you took a second look at him, classy blue suit, pompadour and yellowish skin, that was Wally. Wally Darling, a well-known painter in the neighborhood. And the enigmatic man who lived directly next to you. He smiled at you as he took the ice cream bowl from you. He pointed at the box. It's service on the house. You blushed, looking after him as he sat down to eat. When you had moved in, he had initially just eyed you out from home. It seemed at the time he wasn't sure about the new arrival. Understandable, of course. But after he saw you struggle with your moving boxes, he finally left through home's doors and approached you, introducing himself as, well, Wally Darling, painter extraordinaire. Kind and helpful at that. Of course, any help given to you was accepted with open arms and your house turned from an empty husk to a living, breathing thing in a jiffy. With reawakened interest, you watched Wally consume your cream. So, 
you said after a few minutes. I have never seen you come by, so... What made you come by? Wally looked at you softly. It takes a while for home to adjust to seeing a new face. Was he talking about the town? But after Julie brought your cream a bunch of times to us to give it a shot, we warmed up to you. Uh, any pun here is not intended, of course. You leaned on your counter, hanging on to every word Wally was saying. Right. You seem nice enough, so why should I be cautious of you? Right. He smiled. Maybe it was a bit awkward, but he seemed cool and attractive. But I can't just let you fix my messes. You pointed at the jukebox. So let me do something nice for you too. He leaned back on the soft chair, eyebrows raised. Oh, and what were you thinking of? How about a date? Nothing fancy, of course. Maybe some shopping? Maybe with some cheap fast food at the end? Or the middle? Wally smirked. Hmm. A mall date. Sounds lovely. Your date was two days later. Little short notice, of course, but it was merely a mall date, so who cares, really? Molly picked you up at your house, as Pompadour as impressive as always. Together with his dashing smile and quite attractive suit. Hmm. Come to think of it, he always wore that outfit. The only indicator that he ever switched his clothes was how worn they were, and the shirt he put on beneath it. That was something that you had noticed immediately, and something you decided to tease him on. As the two of you were sitting at the edge of the mall's food court, enjoying some burgers. So, Wally, you said after swallowing a huge bite of tasty beef, do you always wear such elegant clothes? He chuckled and blushed a little in response. Man's gotta dress sharp. That's what my pa always used to say. Oh. Hmm. Wally looked at you with a kind, patient smile as you were thinking. So you really only have that? Besides pajamas, I got nothing else. The entire time you were on this date, you had been vehemently preventing him from buying you stuff, while you wondered what to get him for helping you with the jukebox. And now, thanks to him telling you that, you finally figured it out. You patiently waited for your meals to be eaten completely before taking his hand. I'm going to buy you something, you said, determined. And confused, he blinked in response. Why do I have the feeling it's going to be quite exhausting? He joked, but he didn't resist as you dragged him onto a nearby men's clothing store. Hey, this is where I get my suits! He said as he was about to dart to the suits aisle. Nope, nope, not today, nope. You grabbed him by the back of his shirt. He giggled. Ah, come on, it's my style. It's just so me. Against his will, you pushed him into a more normal section of the store. Before you could even verbally react already, you had thrown two pants and three jackets at him. <laughs> oh boy, someone seems to be in their element. Sighing almost reluctantly, Wally vanished in the changing cabinet. You know this is a little ridiculous, right? Less talking, more modeling. He chuckled in response to that. I'll just take that as a compliment. First, he stepped out with a really tacky Hawaiian shirt that you really only picked out for an experiment. Disappointed, you looked at him. I like it. He looked like a clown. I think I like it, I mean. With a deadpan, you simply said, Next. After a minute or two, he stepped forth in a quite classy velvet bathrobe. Huh. I feel like I'm about to read a super long bedtime story to an underage child. 
Only thing missing is a pipe. I feel like a dad. For a moment, you looked him up and down. Hmm. Let's put that one on the maybe pile. A while later, and many, many attempts at finding something later, Wally stepped outside wearing the sickest black leather jacket you had ever seen. I don't know about this one, it's quite heavy. He said as he T-posed to give you a better look. Halt, you said, raising a finger. Slowly unbuttoned the jacket, pulling it a slightly bit back. Great, specifically today, he was wearing a pink shirt beneath. That, that would not go. I'll be back in a minute, we are having something here, just that pink isn't vibing with me. You said as you ran between the store's aisles. However, Wally didn't need to wait long as you pushed him into the changing room while offering him a white shirt that you had quickly found. But I have some of... Oh, hmm, this isn't my size. It's a bit short and tight. Mm-hmm, that's why I picked it up. And soon he stepped outside in the glorious jacket with the incredibly tidy whitey beneath. He looked at himself in the mirror. Meanwhile, you blushed. Hard. This outfit had really worked. Especially with his beautiful pompadour. You played with your hair coyly a little as he looked at you. I don't feel this. I feel like I look... Uh, mean. And then he noticed your facial expression. <laughs> well, someone likes it. Concerned, he held up the price tag and blushed. Oh, dear. I'll buy it, but why? Because you look great. He exulted sharply. If I accept this, you expect me to wear this, correct? You blinked. No. You were lying. So obviously lying. Every time he would wear this, you would die of happiness. He scratched his right cheek with his left hand and thought, well, maybe you could wear this a couple of times and then straight up burn it in his backyard while you were at work. Meanwhile, however, you had taken out a switch comb from your pockets. Can you do me a favor, Wally? He looked back at you. Of course. Just, uh, once, can you comb through your hair for me while wearing that? Confused, he took the comb and did as instructed. Mm. Yes, perfect, you muttered. The day was soon going to end. Wally was escorting you to your home, still dressed in his greaser outfit. The two of you stopped in front of your home's door. So, uh, he scratched the back of his head shyly. I had a surprising lot of fun today. Had? You said seductively, raising an eyebrow. Confused, he looked at you. I mean, yeah, isn't the day over now? You deadpanned, as you inserted your keys into the door, opening it, before tapping his shoulder, gently pressing your lips onto his. Surprised, he hummed, before finally accepting it. It was actually him who took hold of your hips to pull you in closer. And after your mouth separated, and he let go, watching after you as you stepped inside. But just as Wally turned around to leave, you reopened the door, grabbed him by his collar, and forcefully dragged him inside your house before locking the door behind the two of you. 
Hey, thank you for watching my video until the end. If you're new here, I hope you stick around and watch a few more. But before I say goodbye, I'd like to remind you to like the video and subscribe. That really helps the YouTube algorithm. That's all. Hope you have a good day. Until next time. Bye.